Today I wanted to talk to you about the artillery shells that I've been finding in the river. You know, I've made a few videos, I showed myself retrieving them and how I clean them and what they look like after they're clean. But one of the questions I keep getting from, from you guys is that, you know, how do you really know those things are safe? And I've tried to explain the writing, how to look for fuses and what I look for, but I'm not sure that I'm really doing a real good job with that. So I wanted to show you today on video exactly what I'm looking for and how I can look these things up to know that they're perfectly safe or could potentially be dangerous. So I laid some things out in front of me. I have a training manual from the Army. It's restricted though, so don't share this with anyone. And uh, we'll take a look at these things and I'll show you exactly what I look for. At this spot that I'm metal detecting, and you've seen in my videos, I find primarily four types of projectiles. I have three here that I'll show you. The first is called a canister round, and all this is is a little steel tube that's filled with little steel balls and a type of resin, which is kind of like a hard plastic, so there's absolutely no danger there. But we do have artillery projectiles, and here are two different types. This is a 75 millimeter, this is a 37 millimeter. I also have found a few 40 millimeters, but they're just like these, just a little tiny bit bigger, so I'm not going to worry about showing you those. First thing we want to do when we find these things, do an overall look at them, okay? I always say look for a fuse. Well, there's two places the fuse is going to be. One is in the nose, like this. It would be right here. And you can see there's no fuse there, okay? One is in the base. Now, there's a hole in here, but if you look down in there real close, you can see it stops. And besides, a fuse would actually be a big plug in the base, maybe made out of brass, or sometimes it is made out of iron, but it'd be a great big plug. So we can tell just by looking at this real quick, this is not a fused projectile. This one, on the other hand, is a little bit more tricky, because when you pick this up, you notice that looks like a fuse, doesn't it? Okay? But it isn't a fuse. This is what the military calls a ballistic windshield. It isn't a fuse, and I'll show you why it's not a fuse. Also look in the base, it has the same little hole. And this little hole just held a compound that acted like a tracer. So when they fired it, it would burn brightly so the gunner could see where the shell was going. But again, if you look in there, you can see it just ends. And the fuse would be much larger and it would be a solid plug. This is a windshield that's actually come off. So this is what this one looks like underneath. You can see it is solid here. So there's no fuse in there. It's threaded. And the windshield it's just a little light piece of, don't believe it's aluminum, I think it's some type of pot metal. But this just makes it so that the shell can go through the air better and fly straighter and longer. But how do we know that's not a fuse? I'm going to show you this one now. This is a shell that was given to me. Well, actually, I traded something for it. Didn't really want to, but that's how it turned out. This is what a fuse would look like. You can see it's made out of a different kind of metal. This is iron, this is probably copper or brass, and you see it has lots of lines and you'll see numbers on it and you can tell that you know some pieces get screwed around and whatnot. So it looks very different than that. This does not have a base fuse, it's flat solid, so you don't have to worry about that. So getting back to this one, if you look at the rotating band, which is just the copper band or the brass band that grabs a rifling and makes the shell spin when they fire it, you see lots of numbers. Okay, here's a date, which is kind of cool, 1942. But we keep going around and around, 75 millimeter. So that's how we know what this is. This is the important thing as far as finding out whether or not it's explosive. See, it says M72. This little one here is the same type of information. Again, it's 1942. The important information is the M number. See, it's 37 millimeter. And it says it's M51B1. What we can do now is look that up in a book. Now here is a book that I have. This is called a training manual that the Army put out. This is TM9-1901. You can look this up online, just Google it, and you'll actually get a copy of the training manual. It's free, and you can look at it. The only problem is, is whoever copied this thing to put online it must have been on crack because they just did a terrible job. They must have been getting paid by the page and it's all cattywampus and you can't read half of the stuff and the pictures are terrible. You can see they're just dark looking. But we can go to this manual and look up exactly what these shells are. So we can take the information the 
M72 and come over to the book or just look, you know, as I said, look it up online and it tells you what it is right here. We got the shot fixed AP armor piercing M72 with tracer, which is a little hole in the bottom, 75 millimeter gun. And it tells you right here that it has uh, no ballistic cap and is solid except for a small tracer cavity in the bottom. So we know that's a perfectly safe round. However, if you look on the next page, you'll see where it says shell fixed HE, which is high explosive, M48. So if that rotating bin had M48 on it or any other number, we would have to be very, very careful. And just to show you in the book, this is a uh, 75 millimeter with a base fuse. This is the fuse that's screwed into the bottom of the shell. So you'd see that thing sticking out. You can see it's a big plug. If go back a page or two, here's a picture of a 75 millimeter. And you can see this piece right here is screwed into the nose. So that's how you can tell that. Another thing that I get asked all the time in these videos is how do you know these things aren't fired? Because the ones I'm finding aren't fired. This is how you can tell. The rotating band on this one is nice and smooth. If it had been fired, it would look like this. It would have all these little lines. And that's where the shell is grabbed the rifling of the cannon so it would spin. No marks like that means it was not fired. That means it was fired. So it's pretty simple. You can see the same thing on these 37 millimeters. They're all smooth. If they've been fired, they would have those little lines in them. And another thing you guys might wonder about is why does this have this little hole right here? And the reason is I have to drill that out to get the water out of it because water has a tendency to collect in here. In the past, I did not do that. And what happens is the ballistic cap continues to deteriorate so that in a few years, this thing was almost completely gone. But I found if I go ahead and drill it out, shake the water out of it, and when I run it through the hot wax treatment, the wax gets in there and, and cooks it dry. This gets preserved and it doesn't deteriorate at all. So that's about it for the video on these shells. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'll leave you with one other tidbit of knowledge that is probably pretty useless for most of you, but I thought was kind of interesting. When I was in the military years ago, and anyone who's ever been in the military will know this, you have a rifle. You have to call it a rifle or a weapon. Um, if you call it a gun, like us civilians, uh, the people get really angry, you know, the drill instructors or whatever. And I never could figure out why you couldn't call it a gun. This is my theory. Cannons are called guns. So I'm thinking now that maybe it all harks back to the infantry versus the artillery. So you can't call it a gun because a gun is a piece of artillery. That's like a whole separate category of, of fighting men. So you have your rifle. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it could be. I think it might be on to something. No one's ever explained that to me. Even when I was in the service, they didn't know. No one knew. But I think that could be what it is. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just let me know.